Hi guys, welcome back to Razer RC, and uh, today I thought I'd talk about the Hyper TT and some of the uh, interesting steering characteristics, I guess you would call it. Um, this truck's a little bit tricky to set the steering on, and because there's a bunch of little factors that come into play uh, that can limit your steering, uh, your steering throw left to right. Um, overall, I'd say this truck has kind of a, a wide turning radius. You know, the, the 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 wheels don't really turn left to right all that very far, you know, a little bit less than your average RC car. So I wanted to kind of uh, walk you through that a little bit, some stuff that I found um, recently when working on this truck. So uh, steering wise, the, the way I generally set steering on RC cars is to first uh, set the camber links um, left and right and make sure they're equal. That's that's really important to get the, the same amount of travel uh, left and right. So these camber links should always be the same length. And I just measure from one ball cup to the their ball cup along the, the turnbuckle here. Set those to be the same. Set it so the car, uh, you know, toe-wise, pretty much points kind of straight ahead. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, no toe-in left and right, but the main thing is to make sure they're the, the same. And then I generally uh, set the camber, um, you know, let's say negative one degrees is what you're gonna go with. So set your camber both sides, zero or one degrees. And then also make sure that the, the servo horn, um, is straight up and down at 90 degrees for this particular truck. Every car is a little different. So far it seems like 90 degrees is about right. And that way when you turn, you know, the servo right or the servo left, um, you're going through the same arc, the same range of motion. Um, and you'll have to adjust this little uh, drag link or, or steering link right here to get those uh, to, to match correctly with the car. So set all those up, get the car driving straight, and that's kind of got your baseline for uh, setting up your steering. Now obviously the next thing you got to do is set your endpoints. And so on this truck, uh, the endpoints are a little bit different than you know other cars I've found. Um, usually you set your car up on a stand or on the ground, and you turn far left. You know, let me, let me turn the truck around a little bit here. And you turn far left and kind of make sure, okay, you know, my server's not straining. That's about right. And then you turn far, far left, set the steering and make sure, you know, your server's not straining. Okay. And then you're like, all right, my endpoint's set. Well, on this particular truck, you got to do a little more than that. So what I found is that, um, you know, you'll, you'll turn the truck far left or let's say far right. And then um, what happens is through the range of you know arm travel here, as the arms go up and down, it actually changes. So so if you watch the servo here, um, I've got the let's say the car set to far right, my endpoint set to far right, and then when you push down on the truck, actually the arm is is uh, when it's being uh, pushed down, the servo actually has to change a little bit, right? You can see the servo is actually forced to move a little bit to the left there. So what that means is you actually have to set the, the end point of, of, the, of the right to actually be this length rather than the original length. So when you set the end points, just go far right, test the car all the way up, all the way down, make sure you're not actually pushing against the servo when you do that. And the same thing on the other side, go far left um, and, and watch the push the arms through the range of motion. Um, and you'll, you'll actually find that it's probably limited a little bit. So why is it being limited or why is the servo being uh, pushed back? And, and I've been looking into that and there are a few things it seems like that are going on. Um, so let's kind of go through that a little bit. And we got to pop the, the wheel off here to look at it a little bit more. So let's throw it back on. Get my little fancy uh, Schumacher. Uh, wheel wrench here. Okay, so um, there, it seems to be there are a few different things. And, and if you have thoughts on this, I'd love to hear them because it's still a little bit of a mystery on some of these things. But um, the first one is really these uh, Intigy uh, steering knuckles. And, and I like these because they're aluminum and they're, they're really sturdy actually. I haven't had no issues with them. And so uh, you'll see it actually has these nylon inserts, right? And uh, what I found actually is that these nylon inserts, they actually have to be set pretty darn loose. Let's kind of pull them up. You can see like how much play there is in, in these little uh, nuts, I guess, that are holding in the pillow balls. 
And if they're too tight, um, what happens is when you turn them, um, there's actually not enough play. It's actually restricting the movement of the articulation left and right. So you can see at full lock, actually there's no play. But then when you got it centered, oh, there's a bunch of play. So if you, so set these things actually at full lock, I guess is sort of the, the moral of the story here. Uh, otherwise they're gonna bind up your steering and actually reduce how much the, the they can travel left and right. Um, you also want to be careful with these because they're they're uh, nylon and they have really fine threads, um, so you don't want to strip them. They do actually tend to get a little bit loose over time, I found. So you don't want to be tightening them and loosening them all the time. Basically, just set them and leave them if you can. Um, I found maybe putting a little bit of CA glue on the threads, you know, just a, a tiny, tiny bit of you know some tire glue or something on there can maybe uh, help the threads if if they're starting to get kind of too loose. Um, otherwise, I, I haven't found another uh, supplier for these. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing is that if you look at the, the, this is the original steering knuckle. So the original steering knuckle looks like that and, and, and these holes are basically where the, uh, you know, pillow ball articulates through, you know, it goes around in sort of a circle around these things. And you'll see that they're actually slightly oval, right? There's a it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but there's actually, they're not exactly rectangular. There's a little bit of a, a curve to them. And then also, um, you'll see that they're actually kind of beveled in the window. So uh, they actually allow the pillow balls to kind of come in at an angle and not hit anything. And and I found with the Integi steering knuckles, that's not the case. They're they're just kind of a a perfect cutout, right? They're just kind of rectangles and they're just sharp edges so if you kind of take your integi steering knuckles and just grind them down you know sort of like an oval here and then um, on the sides is really the main one you don't really care that much about about the top but on the sides grind them down kind of bevel them a little bit kind of chamfer them as they, they like to say in the RC world chamfer them a little bit you actually get a little more articulation left and right as you kind of go through the range of motion. So it's really the up and down that will get affected. And I don't know if I can really see it that much in here, but um, you know, you, you can kind of see with mine, I've ground them down a little bit, but uh, so they're, they're a little more oval here, right? And you'll get a little more range of motion that way. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the, the steering knuckles. Grind them down a little bit, I think they'll help. Uh, the other funny thing you'll see is with the uh, servo saber here. So I found actually that the stock turnbuckle, let me grab one. So the stock turnbuckle is obviously just straight, right? It's just straight up and down. And I replaced them with these B5M steering knuckles or steering turnbuckles, um, which are have a curved piece on the inside. So you can see, you know, actually on the inside, let me get my white out better here. Um, the inside piece is curved or angled, I guess you call it an angle ball cup and the, the outside one is straight. And what happened was the stock steering knuckle would kind of hit um, the top of the servo saver uh, when it was at full lock. And I don't know if I can get this going here, but um, yeah, full lock right there, it would, tend to hit kind of the top and kind of the inside of this when you're at full left. So when you're at this angle, basically, and you push up on the arm, it tends to hit this angle part of the servo saver. So this, this uh, B5M turnbuckle fits a little better, it gives you a, a hair more range and a little less binding, so I recommend these. I mean, they bolt right on. Um, I'll put the part numbers down in the description, but that's a nice little upgrade. It'll give you, you know, a, a hair, hair more articulation. The other, the other thing to watch out for is this, um, what do you call it? It's the, I guess the, the nut or whatever that's holding on the Ackerman bar. Um, it's got a set screw in it that can also hit um, part of this servo saver as well. So you want to make sure, you know, when you go left, it's clearing the servo saver here not uh, hitting this, um, hitting the little grub screw on there. Um, so those are kind of some little tips. You know, I, I end up for this B5M turnbuckle, I end up putting a little nut. This is a 
excuse me, an eight millimeter uh, ball stud washer or ball stud. So that that seems to be about the right length, and then nothing clears there. And then what you if you try to use a different ball stud um, that's too long or a different turnbuckle that sticks out too far, you actually will end up hitting the hinge pin brace on the bottom. Um, so this one actually seems to work the best that I found so far. So those are kind of just some quick tips, tricks. Um, hopefully it'll help you find a little more steering out of your Hyper TT. Uh, yeah, the, the, I'm, I'm still kind of trying to figure out. There, there's actually also a fair amount of bump steering this, in this truck. Um, so this, this turnbuckle angle is very sharp, um, especially as you come to full extension or full compression of the arm. Um, it really kind of pulls in the steering knuckle, but it's it's actually fighting against the uh, little cutouts of the steering knuckles on the inside here. So grind those down, and uh, I think you'll find uh, a little more steering throw left or right. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, provide some comments, whatever. You know, if you found any other little tips and tricks about this truck, I'd love to hear them as well. Thanks again, and see you guys in the next one.